Hello, my friends, and uh, welcome to Tools for Ascension. And uh, this is Natty Beats, and uh, of course, this is Wolfgang. And today we will be talking about um, psychic development. You know what that is, what that means for us. I mean, we are working professionally with clients all the time. Of course, we all have our own psychic development. So we're going to be talking sharp here. So I'm not sure whether there's going to be a guided meditation or light language. You know, we just play it by ear. This is very spontaneous. Um, so uh, first of all, Natty, for those that don't know you, um, can you give me like a two minute synopsis of where are you coming from? Anything from, you know, Jim Rat to Rave Chick? <laughs> Rave Noodle? <laughs> noodle? Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm too old to be, you know, for the bleeping rave scene. I was in ashrams. <laughs> I was in Goa. I didn't participate, I have to say. Yeah, I loved, I used to love raves. Don't go to them very much anymore. Um, the, the Rave Noodle thing came because Wolfgang was giving me feedback of a book that I'm currently channeling and and he referred to me as a rave noodle it was it was one of the most favorite messages I've ever got it made me laugh a lot <laughs> so I'm now I am now the rave noodle um so yeah I'm Natty Beats hi everyone so I um I guess my professional titles are psychic development expert psychic activator healer spiritual business coach multi-dimensional channel um I'm also a singer I'm also an artist I also have ADHD and I'm very hyperactive and love doing all of the things. And I don't think as human, we should limit ourselves. The more that we bring back our multidimensionality, I think we should honor that by indeed doing all of the things <laughs> and enjoying them. <laughs> um, yeah, but that is, that is pretty much me in a nutshell. Less than two minutes. Look at that. That was that good. Was now, good. you have my respect. You know? um, definitely, you put your money you know, where your mouth is. You know, I mean, you act, you know, and you surrender to spirit, you know, very radical. I mean, I did myself, you know, and um, I got the greatest blessings, I have to say, you know, and I give up everything, you know, my my possession, my flat, I had a cool flat. <laughs> you know, I would have had a great job, you know, I want to be enlightened, you know, bye bye. So, um. Now, let's just talk a little shop. Mm -hmm. So what is your encounter, you know, with psychic and development? You know, what are the kicks? You know, what are the foul things that you experience? OK, so whew, there's been a lot over the last few years. Um, my my understanding of psychic development, or I guess my method of psychic development uh, that's evolved over the last few years, a lot of it has been from working with you, Wolfgang, and doing the clearings and stuff. Um, I I am unsure what a lot of people out there teach as psychic development. I've had a lot of clients come to me and say that they've done loads of courses in psychic development and nothing's happened. They have no connection. And I'm like, what are these guys being, being given? They have one session with me and they're like, oh, my God, I'm so psychic. I'm like, yeah, no, I didn't really do much. I just flicked the top off. But um, I think that <laughs> I think a lot of people try old methods of psychic development and overcomplicate it and and try and get you to do things like I don't know put a photo in an envelope and sit there and try and guess it and try and guess it and that's not really going to do anything to to activate your psychic channel what I discovered through working with Wolfgang through opening up my own abilities is if you want to open up your channel you need to clear the crap you need to get rid of all the density you need to activate your channel by connecting with different fra fragments and aspects of yourself and your soul and as a natural byproduct of that suddenly you have a psychic connection and it starts to get stronger and once you have it of course you can play around with it and strengthen it that's another part but the most important bit is that you actually get in there and do the work first and face the deepest parts of yourself, heal the trauma, clear the dark entities, all of that. Um, so that's what I've been doing to myself and clients tirelessly for the last four years. Um, one of a good uh, example of an experience would be the first session that I ever had with you, Wolfgang. <laughs> Which was my first, uh, it was my first experience 
um, the first time I experienced going into a past life and I went back and got regressed into Egypt and I'm clairvoyant so I experience things very visually but I always find that when someone is holding space for me things come through so much uh, clearer because I'm able to just be in the experience that's why it's so powerful when you're working with a practitioner or in, even in a group having your space held and this thing was like technicolor. I was back in Egypt and I was looking after a pharaoh who was laying in a gold bath and I was gathering around herbs and doing healing on him. And I got the information through that I was a healer for Seti the first. Um, and I was then buried alive with him when he died so that I could go and see him in the afterlife, um, which, which did my head in enough. But then Wolfgang said to me, I was connected with my higher self, getting very clear answers. Wolfgang said to me, um, do you know Seti the first in this life? And I got a yes. And I started feeling very anxious and my whole body was getting hot. And he said, who is he? And I just got my dad. <laughs> like So clear. And I was like, OK, so my dad used to be a pharaoh in a past life and buried me alive fantastic um and this is just it was a small uh, it was a small bit of the session we covered many past lives in that session but it blew me away because it was the first time I started getting really into the the tangly how tangly karmic stuff is and timeline stuff and and just I guess having my eyes open to how weird um everything was uh the next day after Wolfgang session I'm not gonna lie I felt very very strange I'd connected with many, many different beings. I'd also connected with ETs for the first time. And I felt like I was going insane. This was when my abilities had first opened up. I think I was about, by the time I met Wolfgang, I think I was about four or five months deep. So I was a baby, baby, baby. And previous to that, had no spiritual knowledge of anything. Um, so this happened. And I remember sitting there the next day. And what made me feel bad, which I tell all my clients not to do, is I sat and tried to Google who the Anunnaki were, <laughs> who the great were. Who the, I'm like, talk about inviting in the, the parasitical entities, eh? <laughs> and it made me feel it made me feel insane I didn't feel okay um now I always advise my clients that whatever happens in the sessions treat it like a weekend in Vegas what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas you don't need to go back you don't need to pick it apart um Wolfgang did say to me <laughs> that I don't need to go back and revisit things or place judgment but I was curious I'd never had this before so I, I got on Google and and yeah really regretted it made myself feel crazy but um, but yeah, four, four years on, and I mean that's nothing compared to some of the things we're experiencing now in these in these sessions. But it was a fun one. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, you know, when we talk about psychic development, I would say every first time client with me, you know, I run him through a crash course of course of psychic development. You know, be a no lad, you're gonna get relaxed, you get all floaty. You know, and then you're on that beach and, you know, have the central, you know, connotations. You know, you can't do this in real life. You know, I teach you the yogic stuff. You know, we ground you <laughs> like anything. And I make sure that you're grounded, you know, and you basically learn grounding 100 percent. You know, most people nowadays, their Kundalini comes up and their root chakra gets cleared. You know? And opening the crown chakra, you know, you have any music that doesn't have this crown chakra open. Maybe a scholar, <laughs> you know, and then an opening the heart, you know, I'm not going to take anybody into trauma, you know, um, past lives, you know, and most of this, I was Cleopatra or I was a powerful ruler, you know, it's there's always a lot of suffering around, you know, this is nothing glorious, you know, believe me, you know, they're all they're coming forward because they got hurt really bad. You know, there's nothing to look forward to, I have to say. So um, anyhow, um, you know, you need this love, you know, you have to be connected with source, to, you know, that morphine <laughs> that is available for you, you know, to deal with what you're dealing with. I'm, you know, I'm not piddling around here. You know, this is valuable time, you know, this is ascension time. And, you know, um, the people that come to me, they really want to know, I guess. You know, these are serious people, you know, teachers and healers, you know, just probably also your clients. Is that right? Yeah, a lot of my clients. I, I recommend all my clients um, to all of the trusted healers that I've worked with 
because I think it's really important that you don't get all of your stuff off one person, that you connect with many different people for different energies and different healings. Um, and it also stops you from having that uh, that thing that used to happen quite a lot with spiritual teachers where people put you on a pedestal and then they start taking away their own power because they're looking to you to fix all your things. So any of clients that work with me, I'm, I'm like, you should go see Wolfgang and you should go and see my friend Linda as well and <laughs> connect. But a, a lot of people I've had as well have come uh, because they've found me on your videos and they've done your meditations and they've said to me that they couldn't find anything in 1717 as I'm saying this they didn't find anything that worked and then they did your meditations and it blew them away and then they found my stuff and it blew them away and they're like yay finally <laughs> so I guess there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of well a lot of false light a lot of false light out there the the projecting and um the grounding and connecting thing so that's uh there again where i got my bread and butter for my psychic development <laughs> is from doing sessions with you or to all my clients every single person i speak to ground connect protect ground connect protect that that's before you do any work with spirit anything at all you need to ground your shit you need to connect properly and you need to call in protection so that because not everything out there is light and love right so it, it is absolute bread and butter if you don't take anything else away from this podcast that we're doing today <laughs> ground connect and protect <laughs> when you're working with psychic stuff <laughs> yeah but basically you know why do people come to you you know they're waking up you know, they're seeing ghosts or some of them, you know, they have certain problems and they tried everything else, you know, certain diseases, you know, I mean, I have people that were for 10, 15 years in therapy, you know, and, and nothing works, you know, and one, two things, it's it's cleared, you know, therapies yeah. never look at ghosts and <laughs> curses, <laughs> you know, maybe a few on past lifetimes, so they're really missing the point. You know, plus there is no transformation through mental readjustment. You know, it's more the heart opening, the energetics. And, well, look, you know, um, once you go into a past lifetime, you know, I mean, I think things change for you. You know, you realize you're not a one-shot event anymore. You know, many people think, you know, when this is done, you know, we are done, lights out <laughs> you know, for, forever, you know, or maybe hell or heaven forever, you know, but uh, once you look into a past lifetime, first of all, how did it affect you and how does it affect most of your clients? Um, for me, it was the, the past life stuff was pure excitement. Um, it was that the connecting with entities with the thing was what made me feel uh, uncomfortable on and off just because I was having to adjust um, it's like all the things that you see in horror movies and blah 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 <laughs> human brain was like oh my god there is actually things out there that can get me but I mean seriously guys it's nothing to really be scared of as long as you're working with protection and you know you call in the dragons <laughs> they'll look after you the worst thing that I've ever had happen in my physical real reality is, is um when I pissed off that wizard by not by not removing someone's shackles properly and my car got broken into and I had to message you can you remember that I had to message you I I had a, a um I did a session on the client this was when I was still really really I mean I'm always still learning but this was when I was still right at the beginning of removing things and I had removed some shackles from a client and I hadn't asked if the entity that put them in place was still hanging Ooh. around uh, and that was how, how I learned to then always do that, right? But my car got smashed into. I came home. I turned, tried to switch the, put the light switch, and the bulb burst. I went into my back room. I flicked the light switch. The bulb burst. I was like, oh my fucking god! Message Wolfgang like, <laughs> and we booked a session the next day. And and um, Wolfgang was just laughing. He was like, hee hee, who have you pissed off? <laughs> We we laugh a lot in sessions. It's, it's very important uh, to keep a sense of humour with with all of this stuff. Um, spirit, spirituality, in my opinion, is not something that should be all serious and and all of that. It all um all dark ages. <laughs> I have to say, you know, the higher up you go, then the better the humour gets. Oh yeah. You know, if you have somebody that's stern, you know, I stay away from. Them. And I really stay away from them, you know, it's, um, you know, when they're for fluff and light, they certainly have a very beautiful sense of humor. Yeah, I think that I think humor is very important. And um, so circling back to the I'm just going off on a tangent back to the past lives. When I experienced past life, I was insanely excited 
um, because my soul knew that that's what I was supposed to be doing. Um, and I get the same feedback from my clients of like, it's something that they were always searching for, but they couldn't put words to it. And when they have that connection, it's like this huge confirmation that they never knew they were looking for, plus a huge excitement and huge magic, that that inner childlike wonder of this isn't it, the, the shitty three <laughs> world that you see around you, the matrix, all of that it's not it it's so much like further and far beyond and it is pretty magical yeah some of them are, are traumatic and you know you're healing I've had quite a few complete breakdowns during Wolfgang sessions some really uh nasty stuff happening in crying she cried you yeah. know and, and, and crying you know out of love out of pain you know when you tune into deep pain you know happens is cathartic means you know it's good it's releasing you know so oh, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. all, all, all healing, all of the lots of lots of crying and stuff. But even a lot of them, to be honest, even though it is healing trauma, I find it really fun. It's like a video, like you, a witch jumps out of the darkness and slits your throat, and you can feel your throat being slit, and you're like, God, this is insane. It's like the world's greatest simulator, but it feels real, and it's literally making you more healthy. Like it's it's yeah, <laughs> journeying into into past lives, other dimensions, is is my favourite aspect of um, all of the psychic work that I do um, above everything else. And I think all of my clients uh, would probably agree. I do a lot of guided psychic journeys, and they all think that they're not very psychic. And when I start channeling the light language and light codes to to activate their channel. And they're suddenly flying with dragons and swimming with Lemurians and waterfalls and exploring black holes and all of that crazy stuff. They come back round. Um, and a lot of them, a lot of the feedback that I get is that um, they never thought they could experience that without psychedelics or that the, the sessions are very similar to things like ayahuasca trips, mushroom trips, stuff like that. And that they didn't know that it was possible to, to access that. I'm glad you're bringing this up. You know, a lot of my clients that took Ayahuasca, you know, they're coming from very, you know, established um, positions in the physical world, you know, very honorable positions. You know, you have to have your stuff together to have a job like that. And they take Ayahuasca you know, and um, that lady straightens them up. You know? And then they come to me, you know, because, you know, it resonates. And we can just talk straight to you know the the overshadowing spirit of ayahuasca you know they don't have to take it anymore you know and the, the love is there you know and it's, she's very powerful very very powerful goddess you know and it's working through them so um yeah do uh, so you you talking about encountering all kinds of beings you know i mean i think that is the coolest thing at least for me you know, I always wanted to know, you know, the secrets of life, you know, and E.T. and, you know, I studied the Hindu stuff, you know, and all the gods, of course, and all Greek mythology, you know, and North mythology to a certain degree, part of higher education. And, you know, I wanted to really know, you know, and what this is, and through those beings, they come into my sessions. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, they come into my sessions, and I mean, this is so far out, you know, I mean, we encounter mermaids, right, Anunnaki, yep. <laughs> good and bad, you know, and um, you, are you aware of an incarnation of yourself where you were an Anunnaki? Um, I can't think of anywhere I was an Anunnaki, just loads where I got attacked and sabotaged and plugged by them and, and tricked by them uh, unfortunately mm -hmm. I, I part of my personal spiritual boundaries is I don't choose to accept any contact from um, Anunnaki as well as so various, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, yeah, mm -hmm, just just because of if I've never I've never personally had any good experiences with them um, and I I know that they are not necessarily good or bad but from my personal experience I don't feel that they have a great amount of ex respect for human life <laughs> that, that uh. we are a bit uh, like batteries <laughs> that can be that can be tapped their energy a lot um, but yeah so not 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 anyone I've had incarnations as them um, trying to think what i've had in I, well i've had a lot of incarnations as dragons <laughs> sure, yeah. a lot of them 
and just random beings as well. A lot of beings um, come through in sessions and when I'm doing journeys that that aren't uh, that aren't well known. I remember I went through a period, uh, I think in 2022, where uh, I thought that I was going to start writing a book about all these different beings because every time I did a journey, a new being would come through. Um, I remember these ones. I can't remember what they were. They were beginning with O. They were these guys with pearlescent white skin with gold like kind of monocle things inbuilt with their head and I went into their whole realm and they were all going around almost with these what looked like shopping trolleys but they were just moving like energetic matter around and it was in this whole realm and and it was one of the first a load of beings that had come through that weren't in any books or social media or being talked about Um, and then yeah they, they just started coming through thick and fast big guys little guys all of them quite with with quite a lot of sense a sense of humor um because they don't want us they don't want us to be scared when they come through so a lot of them will lead the way with a funny noise or for me because I trance channel them they'll make me do something funny um it's usually in front of clients that I experience these things and they come through and my face will go up to the side or I'll make a weird little <laughs> for no reason at all and I'll start laughing everyone starts laughing it raises the vibration makes it easier for the for the being to come through and it puts everyone at ease because for a lot of people the idea of communicating with ETs and extra dimensional beings um can be a bit scary just because of all of the hacking sabotaging and programming that's been in, embedded by the uh, by the dark agenda over thousands of years <laughs> Sure, you know, most E.T. movies are scary monsters, and so, you know, it's programmed into you. You know, all these fake memories, you know, that have been produced in Hollywood, you know, make it look real. Life on steroids on the dark side, you know, it's all survival stuff. <laughs> you know, and of course, all the big decisions, you know, about mankind are decided in a slug out, you know, with our hero. <laughs> And this being, you know, I got you, you know, it's like, right, this is how this goes, you know, this is how we solve problems, humans, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, what are the changes that you see? Let me just start for myself. So, um, psychic development, so um, the best I can do with clients that are psychically quite evolved. You know, and when I show them, you know, when I clear the channels with them, you know, that I can drive them like a Maserati. You know, like go there, and you know what happened, and the, yep, it's there, you know, and just you know, go for it. You know, and pretty much and many rearms, you know, depending on where they came from. So I had this guy, he had this neck pain all the time, you know, constant his whole life. So and he was standing, so I was just at the end of my healing circle in Tucson. And so, I, okay, let's just check in. So is this from a past lifetime? Yes. All right. So let's call in what happened there. So there were, you know, his whole family, you know, was moving in the forest and it became winter and some kind old man let them, you know, winter over with them, you know, and, and you know, and then of course they will provide him later on. Well, they ate all his supplies and left him to die and starve to death, you know. So his ghost has been riding on that family <laughs> since then. So this ghost was riding him in and he had the neck issue, you know. So, and of course, I talked to the old man and we made him apologize, you know, for the behavior and then get him into the heavens, into the light, and he made that pain is gone, you know, I mean, of course, he was just like jumping around and he couldn't believe it, you know, so this would be considered a miraculous healing, you know, and, and so I find this a lot, you know, when ghosts are being cleared, you know, um, it's many times, you know, let's say if you have an arm problem, you know, there are two or three lifetimes where the same stuff happened, you know, with this, do you have any cool stories like that? Um, I, I find the same a lot with clients, um, like either spirits attachments or or past lives. I had a client again with a neck thing um, and I did a past life journey. Uh, this was actually for her. It was supposed to be a reading and I, and I got shown something that happened to her neck. I didn't actually know she had uh, really bad back problems and she had been hit. She was uh, got mugged. She was going along with um, a cart in the old days and got hit with a shovel. Uh, someone hit her right in the back of the neck with a shovel and it dislodged her head 
Um, and when I did this, I did this meditation, I asked if I was allowed to clear it, asked her higher self, called her higher self in. So we we healed the situation, sort of rerouted the, the timeline, dissolved it. Um, and she spent two days with her neck. She said her neck kept crunching every time she moved it. <laughs> and then suddenly her her response was, and I quote, I'm like a fucking owl. <laughs> She said, <laughs> 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 the, 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 the best thing about that, this was someone that I've known almost my whole life. She's a family friend. Um, she was my hairdresser since I was two. About a week later, I suddenly had a had a sudden realization and my whole skin went cold. Her hairdresser, when I was a kid, was called Shovelhead. That was probably the dude that did it. <laughs> How in the, it, no, no, her, the hair, her shop that she owned, she was a hairdresser. Her business was called Shovelhead. Oh, she called it Shovelhead, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Um, so yeah, things like that happen a lot. I, I had one time where I had a client um, who came to see me. She was someone, so a lot of the people that came to see me in that first year when my gifts were opening up, um, they were people who weren't at all really psychically tapped in or even really open to that they were open-minded but they just came to see me because there was things wrong with them and they felt like I was the right person to see and this was when I was doing more hands-on healing and stuff and um and she came to see me because she was uh ha had done two rounds of IVF and was unable to get pregnant um and I, I said just for, like full disclaimer I, I never tell anyone and any healer worth their salt should never tell anyone I can heal that for you or I can cure that for you it's all curiosity um as soon as you take responsibility for someone else's healing guess who's going to get all of their shit <laughs> so um yeah, yeah. So let's tap in and see what we can do and we went in and she had a past life where she had left her children um I think she had died and left her children but then returned as a spirit so her spirit went back and visited her kids and there was this awful heartbreaking image of her kids sitting under a tree in a thunderstorm um like freezing and starving and she because she was a spirit by that point she couldn't do anything to help them so it was like all this trauma um there was another uh there was another life where she and, was and she probably vowed not to have kids anymore yeah so she made it you know that's vowed. the important one you know um, and then another lifetime in the same session was was that she had been one of the people that took away the babies in Egypt. Um, she was taking away babies to be killed. Curses, um, curses, curses. So yeah, curses, <laughs> uh, all of that. And when we asked for this to be resolved, it, it was um, she was laying in front of me and I was moving my hands around with her energy and her stomach started making a noise like a, sh a spaceship. Um, it literally, it was like, it was her stomach gurgling, but it was like, and she was, she was staring at me with these wide eyes. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I was like, I don't know. Is it, it was just, just lay, just relax and whatever. Um, yeah, it was making all sorts of noises. Um, I didn't, she, that was the only session she had with me. She does now have a child. Um, but I, I have no clue whether that was from, the session or more IVF or, or, or whatever it was probably a, a culmination of things um but yeah that was it was a pretty cool session to do just because again it was the first session I'd done like that and it and it again opened up my eyes to the fact that nothing in this life is per permanent and in my opinion everything's up for negotiation <laughs> that is correct um, yeah, so gurgling noises. Um, do you have that a lot too? A lot of my clients, when they start clearing, they start burping. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's like, uh, that's the sign. I mean, you know, when you hit something that's strong, you know, burp. and I have some, you know, little tiny ladies, Asian ladies, you know, burp like Boy Scouts, you know. Burp, burp. I mean, as if they're chugging sodas constantly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I've let go some pretty big humdingers uh, when we've been doing sessions. I'm burping, yawning, coughing when I'm doing sessions with clients as well. Because um, often uh, if I have a client in front of me who isn't able to release a lot of their stuff for whatever reason, maybe they haven't got such a strong connection, and um, a lot of the energy will pass through me. So I'm sitting there burping out their energy. <laughs> Crying. Oh, um, you know, sometimes I. Um process the uh, pain for others you know and i cried you know i mean once 
um, yeah, uh, you know, so yeah, that happens uh, for a healer. You know, this is something we got to deal with. But it's, it, I think it's cool. You know? I mean, the amount of love that I experience, you know, is awesome. You know, when Mother Mary and so this loving beings coming in, you know, it's, it's, you know, right? You know, it's is awesome. You know, the love it brings tears into you, you know, or when you change somebody's life, you know, when they run love onto their inner child, you know, and start crying. It's just an abandoned kid, you know? I mean, that is just, you know, a great gift. You know, for us healers. So, uh, probably the most rewarding job in the world, I think. And so, so varied. Uh, for someone who's got ADHD, I get bored very easily. I've I've jumped careers so many times in my life. I'll never get bored of this because no two sessions are ever the same. Everyone's unique. You always go somewhere new and exciting and fun. You never know what's going to happen when you turn that camera on. I love it. It's a it's a ride. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if I would tell some stories, you know, I mean, nobody would believe me. You would believe me because, you know, you have seen things like this. So um, the psychic development, I would say, you know, is like, you know, when you get a car, you know, your body is a car, you know, and they have to show you, okay, you know, um, you need to have gas in the car. You know, so in the same way, um, people have to learn how to ground themselves, you know, otherwise, when their grounding chakras are clogged up, they drag in butt, <laughs> you know, they barely get out of bed, you know, and can't survive without coffee, you know, so these are really important things, you know, and if your crown chakra is clogged up, you're never going to have any spiritual inspiration, you know, and no good ideas, just follow the formula, you know, so... And if you can't open the heart chakra, you know, how much love is in your life? You know, what kind of a sad life is this? So um, you put all this into a book, I guess, you know, where you, um, you know, describe methods. Are you describing methods that people can follow? Yeah, so I, in the book, uh, it's called Upgrade from Within, coming out May the 21st on Amazon. Uh, and the book is a mixture of my own experience. So like educational memoir uh, and practical, um, practical development things. So I say so many times to people that you cannot teach psychic development. It's not some, something that you can tell someone and they're like, OK, I understand that now I'm developed. It just doesn't work like that. You have to go through the process. So I've put within the book um, as many different techniques that I've used, um, some that have come through channeled, some that I've learned from Wolfgang, some I've learned of other mentors. So it's it's really a compilation um, of my own experience, but also expertise pulled in from people like Wolfgang and, and other mentors I've worked with that have a combined experience of about 90 years between them. Um, that I've, I've been lucky enough to work with and, and then pulled it all together and put it in, in a palatable way that really anyone can read this book and and play around with some things. Um, there's also channeled messages in there and light code activations. So the book in itself is an activating text. As soon as you buy it, you are giving consent for activating your channel. It's, it's you saying, I want to develop my channel. I want to have psychic abilities. Uh, there's light codes on the cover. Um, anything that's channeled, whether it's spoken, whether it's written, contains light code so if you're ever listening to someone channeling or reading something that's channeled you are receiving energy that is constantly activating your own channel and um, making the connection between you and your higher self and you and your guides stronger uh, and the rest of it is is basically my experience so it starts off with how my psychic awakening happened the week long of traumas that ended up making me first think that I was needing to go to a mental hospital and that I was going to be catatonic and there was something wrong with me and then all of the amazing mentors and healers that appeared on week two that essentially put me back together again and told me that I was psychic and I was a healer and then my abilities started opening up um, then we've got all of the the practical stuff and then the last section of the book is called the journey and it is a section of my life a couple of years ago where in 2022, my whole life collapsed. So at the beginning, Wolfgang, you said that you 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 got rid of everything because you wanted to be enlightened. I didn't choose to get rid of everything. The universe collapsed everything around me forcibly um, until I got to breaking point in terms of me shouting at the universe. If you want me to do this fucking work and if you're real, if this is all real and I'm not insane, 
something needs to give because I can't be like this anymore. <laughs> Nettie is Nettie is fiercely independent, fiercely independent. If you think she is a sucker, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he doesn't let you get anything taught to him. You know, I mean, I mean, she is so go on. You know? <laughs> She's cussing in front of divinity, you know, believe me, you know, it's it's funny, you know. My swearing is divine. So so I've had I've had conferences with my guides about this. Um because uh, uh at first when I'm swearing and stuff, and my guides have come through before when I'm trance channeling with swear words, and I've stopped and gone, Oh, was that them or was that you? And it's because they're using uh the vocabulary in in my body, right? Um and also to them, swear words, they think it's hilarious that, that it's, we are it's poetic. Yeah, and they but they slang is poetry. That, that <laughs> some people shy away from certain noises or certain like what we perceive as words it's it's a completely human thing um so when i swear because there's love and joy and happiness behind every noise that comes out of my fucking mouth that includes the word fuck <laughs> they are they're great with it um so yeah so 2022 everything collapsed around me um i bought a van a very small van i chucked a very small mattress in the back I took the money that I had left on my credit card, which wasn't a lot, and I just got in the van and essentially said, Jesus, take the wheel. And I just I just drove across the UK. It was very it was a very clunky start, but I ended up on the most insane pilgrimage um, that started off with a conversation with a random man who looked like a wizard in the graveyard in Glastonbury who told me about a place called Tintagel, which is now my second home, and I split my time between the two which is where I met Merlin and a lot of the dragons and just went on this essentially magical mystery tour around England following the coincidences and synchronicities. And the reason that my guides prompted me to write all of this, um, I didn't know that I was writing the book when I was writing all this. I was just keeping it as a memoir. And then they showed me when I tried to go back and start and finish writing the upgrade from within book, they said, you've done it. And they showed me that I'd actually been writing that. And the reason that they said it was so important for this to be in is because it's it's the proof. The proof is in the pudding. Right. So it's showing people the ways that they can they can put themselves through psychic development and psychic activation, but then also showing them my real life experience of what how it translates into the real world because a lot of this stuff I mean the first two years all of my experiences it was all in my head my outer reality didn't change that much I changed a hell of a lot which I'm grateful for but it it took a little while to reflect out into my outer reality and a lot of that was because I was supposed to be traveling I wasn't on my proper path so now I go out and I travel um, I'm still very much giving consent and I'm very much in the driver's seat. So if they tell me to go somewhere and I don't want to go, I ask, let like <laughs> reroute that, please. That's going to be traumatic. But for the most part, I do listen. Um, I did. I've done a lot of things on based on pure faith, booked accommodations that I couldn't afford, driven down roads that I thought my car was going to get stuck and stayed in car parks that didn't feel safe and <laughs> all sorts of things. Um, and it or every single time I got so rewarded for for following on blind faith and believing what they're saying um because as soon as you start putting trust in them and they start slow like don't think that you're gonna suddenly get told to go and spend ten thousand pounds on on something or or something ridiculous they start small with me they started with a necklace that I couldn't afford it was 128 pounds it was a very magical necklace and I had no, absolutely no money and my guide said we'll reimburse you and that was that was uh what I bought before I met the man in Glastonbury and the whole trip started um and when I left the shop I opened my phone and I had a request for a one-to-one -one session with a client that paid for the necklace <laughs> and it was after not having any clients message me for about a month so <laughs> it's a yeah it's, it's a roller coaster of a ride complete with failed romances and wrong turns and all sorts of stuff yeah yeah, we're clearing up a lot of our karma, you know, regarding failed romances. So I have to, I mean, totally agree with you that, um, you know, pretty much every book that you read, you know, gives off a vibrational message. It's coded, you know, especially if it's even coded with meaning. Um, you know, there were certain books, you know, when I read them, um, you know, I was completely uplifted. 
You know? I mean, it's, I mean, I know my force field. You know, this is not imagination. <clears throat> you know, I mean, it put me into a really refined, higher state of consciousness. You know? And so, um, you know, from you know, just reading a book, and it has a big effect on your consciousness besides the information that is contained. You know, it's even having a painting on your wall. You know, um, this, whatever is depicted, the colors, the vibration is going to affect you. You know, like everything in your life is going to affect you. But a book is, you know, definitely a big part, you know, in partaking in this consciousness. Um, so, uh, how do we take it from here? Um, what can people expect when they read this book? Hopefully to activate their psychic channel and feel more comfortable and confident in using it. Um, one of the, the biggest things that I hope people get from this book and all of the work that I do is just feeling a bit more normal with this work. So everything I do is trying to normalise psychic abilities, um, trying to help people feel less crazy, less alone. Uh, pretty much all of my clients that come to me don't have anyone around them that does this stuff. No one understands this stuff. It's why building online communities and doing all the courses I do is, is so important because it helps people find each other. And all of the stuff I talk about online, especially recently, I've started sharing more of my psychic experiences online. And yeah, I'm getting some comments of people calling me crazy because I'm talking about giving birth to dragons and all that. But I get so many more comments of people saying, thank you so much for posting this. Thank you so much for being honest. I thought it was just me. I thought I was crazy. And you'll be surprised. Like this is also a little plea to anyone out there who has these experiences. Please find a way to talk to talk about them, whether it's in an online space or a ca casual conversation, because you may just find that everyone in the room is has had spiritual experiences, but they're all too scared to talk about them and someone has to go first. <laughs> Yeah, it depends, you know, who you talk to, you know, there is this schizophrenic and the yogi, you know, they're having this long walk on the beach and the schizophrenic asks the yogi, so you're being honored and I'm being medicated and locked up, so what's the difference between us? And the yogi says, you don't know who to talk to about your experiences, I do. Yeah. You know, so you got to be careful who you share this you know they have to be on that level or just be a step above you know or below that level you know um, otherwise you blow their mind initially that's why you know for many people you know um, drug psychedelic drugs are really important you know that they can see um, there is a higher reality you know overlaying this one you know you get an insight into this you know of higher intelligences I went the way of philosophy. I mean, you know, I realized, you know, through studying that whatever the world I'm seeing outside is a product of my mind. You know, I studied perception psychology in fine art. You know, I was the best in the class. I took also drugs. You know, I could override all the automatic functions. <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah. you know, I think, <laughs> you know, this is part of being a yogi, you know, or a shaman. You know, or a mystic, you know, um, learning these things. And I would say as the vibration on this planet are going up, you know, gradually, you know, as if a um, psychedelic is, you know, added to the water supply, you know, like a little bit LSD, you know, slightly or psychic, you know, and so people, they start, you know, seeing things a little different, you know, looking more beyond and, um, you know, opening up. Right. So, and uh, then they have to learn once they can look more into the astral, you know, and, and feeling emotions, being empathic, seeing things, you know, maybe seeing diseased ones and so on, or having intense dreams. Um, they need to learn how to operate in this, you know. So on the astral plane, we're still toddlers, you know. Yeah, don't touch this. This is hot, you know. And not all the beings are good. You know, and keep your keep the doors locked. You know, call for protection, so to say. You know, have a bodyguard around you. You know, and smile. <laughs> yeah, and then so. I think also learning to integrate that. I think a lot of people um, struggle with integration when they open up 
quickly, like I opened up quite quickly because the all of the astral awareness is so far away from the 3D muggle brains and the stuff that we've been taught and we've been told. So it can almost end up feeling like you've got two brains operating sometimes and it can be difficult to go between the two. But I, my advice for that is more blankets, more Netflix. If you want to go for a beer and a pizza, go for a beer and a pizza. You need to know when to put this spiritual stuff down and go and be human and, and let it everything integrates by itself like it's a natural process and um, sometimes you just need to let things sit so if you ever get to a point where things are opening a bit too quickly you can ask for it to slow down and um, your guides will always listen to you anyway but if you're starting to feel a bit weird with it I've, I've had multiple little breakdowns over the last few years I had one in 2021 when I realized that I'd spent a month speaking to spirits more than I'd spoken to humans and I didn't (laughs) (laughs) the new friends (laughs) (laughs) but it's we're we're not mate we are human we've chosen to be here um you can't use this spiritual stuff as escapism you can't just be live in the astral all the time we do still have to live a human life so I think it's really important that instead of changing your whole life to spit into, fit into some spiritual path, some spiritual mold, that you find a way to fit spirituality and psychic abilities in with your life, with your chosen life, because you are completely in control. Um, and this stuff can improve every single area of your life um, as long as you don't get don't get swept up in it and don't let it take you over. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, cooking, you know, um... The different path, they're like different cultures, Chinese, Indian, Western, you know, Italian and so on. And, um, but you have to make it, um, you know, your own. You know? Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, you know, I to support my family, you know, I mean, I come from a printing family. My grandparents, they, they had a huge printing company. Um, so somehow I have good printing karma. <laughs> you know, so I had to work as a printer. You know, and um, and so that's a very frustrating thing. <laughs> you know, especially when you you know print uh, CDs, you know, with screens for colors, and you know, so much can go wrong on high speeds. So I had to learn how to keep my heart chakra open. You know, in a noisy industrial environment, stinky. You know, lots of solvent. Everything is toxic. You know, loud like anything. You know, and frustrated people, you know, constantly you have to stop machine clean, you know, inhale <laughs> alcohol fumes. So I learned how to keep my heart chakra open, not to get upset, and then also how to keep my crown chakra open. Yeah. You know? But I had it, and I started smiling, and I had a great time. You know, I mean, that's just, you know, I, I just, you know, I had to do so. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to live anything else, you know. Yeah. So and having this access, you know, to higher consciousness, you know, in the real world, this is important. Of course, you know, it takes time. You know, it's like nobody becomes a professional bodybuilder, you know, but a lot of people do good at the gym. You know, it makes them healthier. You know, so, you know, you don't have to become a monk or a nun or something like this. You know, it's just learning how to deal with life, you know, how to stay healthy and, you know, go um, with the upliftment. You know, I mean, Uncle William LSD is not such a good idea, you know, and even couldn't handle alcohol so well because there was a lot of suppressed stuff. You know? So the more, um, you know, we clear, you know, our subconscious, our energy bodies, you know, the more beautiful, you know, this, um, you know, upliftment of the vibration on this planet you, really will experience. You know? Go into nature if you want to see some kind of a harmony and perfection and not so much the human world. It makes yeah. everything, like, personal psychic development is just an extreme form of personal development, but because it's energetic, it can, you can end up where you are, have the exact same external situation, but because you feel completely different, you're not in despair and anxiety and depression anymore, you suddenly feel so fulfilled and happy with every single thing that you do, but on the outside, every, everything's the same. But because you've changed. <laughs> My clients' lives changed, I have to say. You know, I have <laughs> I have guys, you know, oh, I have thin arms, you know, and now they have a Russian photo model as their girlfriend. You know, <laughs> you know who you are. You know, I mean, I the, the people's life. Oh, yeah, your, your life will change, but you're... You know, I mean, uh, 
for me, inside changed first. So inside changed first before. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it comes from any the of my external inside. stuff, yeah. and it made all the external stuff um, easier. Just, just, just day to day things that we all have to deal with, things like road rage and family drama and all of that. It just becomes a bit easier when when you're able to hold that, like you said, that heart vibration, keeping your heart open, keeping grounded. It definitely helps with all the things. <laughs> yeah that's the morphine for life you know but also if you don't have like 50 ghosts following you around trying to screw up everything yep. <laughs> or being jealous you know of anybody you meet you know that's your life becomes easier so um you know how do people get hold of your book or how will people get hold of a book so by the time this podcast is out uh, wolfgang will have a link <laughs> that he can place underneath this video so what i'm asking as a huge 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 favor this is me putting out a plea to the universe if you enjoy if you've enjoyed any of my past interviews or the work that i've done um with wolfgang or any of my own work i am trying to get everyone to buy the book on the same day because this is how you get into the amazon uh, bestseller list so then that's how the light is going to go out to more people um, outside of my network so there's a lot of people out there that can benefit this is kind of a gateway book so it's something that literally anyone can read and get something from it doesn't have to be for professional psychics or healers or people who want to be professional psychics or healers this is is like an extreme self-development book with a lot of energetic practices and um, energetic hygiene uh, so yeah I'll put the link below and if you guys could set a little reminder in your calendars or your diaries to go buy Natty Beats book <laughs> on the 21st of May uh, I would massively appreciate it as would all of my guides and my dragons who are all clapping around uh, my head right now but yeah massive Really appreciate it and if you enjoy it um pass it on to a friend and and recommend recommend someone else gets it yeah that's it all right we love you long time thank you love you love you Namaste. <laughs>